Doma Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the NBA. So y'all check this out. Well, we're going to talk uh, a little bit Lonzo Ball and those Pelicans, right? Pelicans run around with uh, five wins, ten losses right now. And I was telling you that the Pelicans have a problem. And I hate to be, be uh, come at them like, like, like this, but it is what it is. It, it, it's a coaching issue. It's a, a, a strategic issue. And, uh, you know, I'm just seeing a lot of things there where this team, with the talent that they have on this team, being a 5-10 and 10 is an underachievement, is an understatement. Uh, and they're probably proving that, you know, you do need shooters in the NBA, but I don't really think uh, that you have to have them. You know, I'm a little bit old school. I don't like all these three-point shooter uh, shots in the NBA. I, you know, I think that is the reason why, but I'm not going to go there today. But the bottom line is, you know, teams are putting up 43 point shots in a damn game. Why wouldn't they? Because you can't defend them, you can't foul them, you can't come close to them. Why wouldn't you shoot three point shots when they, you get three points for them? And if somebody comes close to you, they reward you with three, three foul shots. My remedy would be you can't get fouled at the three point line if they don't touch you or push you down. You get the ball out of bounds, right? You can't reward somebody from, from just because he can, couldn't land or something, you know, and they get three shots for it. That's ridiculous. That's why we're getting team games 140 to 128, and it wasn't even no overtime. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's hard to watch. It's getting hard to watch. But no one, if you're not older, you won't know where I'm coming from, right? And the people that are on TV, they can't say these things all the time. They do every now and then, but they can't say these things unless you've got one of them down-to-earth programs on the Internet or somewhere, right, like that. Then they'll get down, but not on, on mainstream TV. They can't say it. It's a reason it's in there. But... Let's, let's talk Pelicans and Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball, in my opinion, is being misused, right? He's being misused. Um, and I watched the Pelicans because of the simple fact, you know, three Lakers left. And I, don't, I don't just leave. You know, I'm a league passer. I don't just, you know, ignore uh, people that I was going for. You know, and I'm definitely not going to ignore Brandon Ingram when I knew that this was about to be something. And it's cool to watch Brandon Ingram development. He's turning in. He's going to be a superstar here very, very soon. He's smooth as hell. Right, Lonzo, Josh Hart too. Josh Hart is a coast to coast guy. He's going to the hole and he's he's a uh, lead rebounder from a guard position, six oh, six foot six foot five. You know, everybody on the six seven six eight. He's leading the league in rebounds. A bad boy, Josh Hart. And his three point shot is really uh, coming on as well. But Lonzo Paul Ball is lagging behind, and Lonzo Ball is going to uh, not going to be considered a great player anymore because you know we, we know his shot. Even though he's working on it, he's really working on his shot. Right, but if you got Lonzo Ball, like I said in my last video about the Pelicans, with Bledsoe in the same lineup, that that's an issue right there. For me, I'm gonna say it before I get in Lonzo Ball. Reddick should start. The dude is old. What is Reddick? 37, 38 years old. Them bones. You don't want a shooter to come off the bench cold like that. And then he comes in. He knows he's the only damn shooter on the whole team, right? So he's only taking off balance shots. Even when he has a split second, he's shooting everything. Anything that if he's open for a millisecond, so he's leaning. Yeah, he's a bad shot maker. We know that about JJ Redick. He's a bad shot maker, but he shouldn't be only taking bad shots, right? That's what he's doing right there. He's only taking bad shots, right? The whole time. That's why his percentage is low. He's coming from the bench and he's only taking hard, contested shots. A problem, a strategic problem. You don't want that, right? He should be starting. Blexo needs to go to the bench. He needs to start. Bledsoe lead that second unit. That's what I would do. But anyway, Lonzo Ball, right? Lonzo Ball it was, was being misused, and you saw it glaringly against Utah Jazz. You know, you have Mike Conley defending Lonzo Ball. Mike Conley, Mike Conley, six one. Lonzo Ball, six seven. Listen to six six, but he's six seven. Whatever. There's a disparity there, isn't it? Right now, 15 years ago, what you doing? Or not even. For some people. Look at Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is 6'3". Anybody 6'5 or less defending Russell Westbrook, he's taking them down on the low block. How we got Lonzo Ball coming up, giving the ball to someone else, and running to the corner? He runs to the corner. Ain't nobody following him to the corner. Who, who cares what Lonzo Ball just ran? It's like sending Dwight Howard to the corner. Ain't nobody going there. It's like when Lonzo shoot, people going to turn around and go get the rebound. He's still not considered a shooter is what I'm trying to say. So he's not going to do any floor spacing. So if you're just going to have him give the ball to someone else and run to the corner, then damn it, get him out of there. Right? 
If someone 6'1 is guarding Lonzo Ball, get Steven Adams and uh, Zion out of the zone. You have Steven Adams over there, and you make Steven Adams, he's lurking. He's not too far. He's out of the zone, but he's not too far. So he's lurking for that offensive rebounding, which he does very well. But And then you put Zion uh, Williamson, he can go in the corner. For, for just for this particular thing, in the corner. Because Zion is not a great shooter, but he can shoot a little bit. Right? You're going to have to respect it because he can shoot a little bit. He's going to be a shooter soon. It's just uh, y'all going to have to deal with this stuff first because I'm still i young and it ain't a problem with landing yet. But at 285 pounds, he will have a problem very soon with landing. And all that jumping every single time is going to be out of the, uh, the question. But right now with that youth, he can do that. But put him in the corner for a second. Right, so you can have a little semblance of spacing, and you put Lonzo. You say Lonzo, if someone six one or six three is is guarding you, you take him down in the low post because let's remember this: Lonzo is a great passer. That's his his strength. So you put him on the low post, and you say, I tell you one damn thing: I don't want you to reverse pivot and shoot over him, a jumper over him. I don't want to see no fadeaways or nothing. Matter of fact, I would even tell him, I don't even want to see a jump hook, right? And I love jump hooks, right? Because a jump hook. You take him down and you give him a jump hook. He has a high percentage shot, right? High percentage shot. You're going to shoot it over a 6-1 person and it's high percentage. But that's not what you want first. You want him, you get one dribble. Because that you, go, you can't dribble it more than once because that's what Mike Conley has a chance, right, when you dribble it. You back him down like you're Charles Barkley and then you give him the fake jump hook and take it straight up on him, right? And he can't do nothing. And then you force that team to double team you. And once they double team you, then you pass out of the double team, right? Because that's your thing. But you force that team to double team, then you have the defense swimming. That, that, I mean, to miss that with four or five coaches on the bench is the, what the, the reason it is because everybody's thinking three pointers. And there's no three point shooters on that team. So, damn it, when you have a mismatch, you go to it, even if it's Lonzo Ball. So, what you do in training is you don't have them shooting all day. You're six, seven, which means you're going to have a mismatch pretty often. You get him down on a low block, and you call me up, and I show him some low post moves. If you can't, uh, Kim Olajuwon got your back, or Kevin McHale, right? You do that. It doesn't take long. You give him the reverse pivot, one dribble, you know, uh, spin move, fake the finish, and finish on the other side, or spin move and finish. Get him the, the low post moves. You know, you know, if you reverse pivot, you use the reverse pivot to get a little space, and that's when you do when somebody's taller than you. But you don't need to because they're going to be smaller than you. So you just really you give them one dribble back up and go up strong. Or when they start uh, doubling, then we can start dancing. That is the issue there. That is the problem, right? Just running around on the perimeter like that is you're just wasting the boy's talent. He's out there. He's excess baggage. And that's not what we want to have, right? That's not what we want to have, right? Listen, <laughs> when Zonzo Ball is on the block, no one is going to run away from um, Brandon Ingram. They're going to stay at home. J.J. Reddick's in the lineup, I told you, because he's starting. Ain't nobody going to leave J.J. Reddick. So, uh, Stephen Adams, if they leave Stephen Adams, then Stephen Adams can come back door and you can give him either the lob or give it to Stephen Adams and he can finish, right? So, they're going to only be able to take a man probably from Zion. And if they do, then you can give it to Zion in the corner because Zion has better handles than what your people expect. So, right, Zion can fake the shot, which they probably not gonna, uh, you know, or you can just let Zion shoot it, if, you know, in some cases. He just, Zion shoot it every now and then because he can make a few, right? He's not that bad of a shooter. It's not like you got Rob, Rob Robeson back in the day or somebody just not gonna make none. He's gonna make a couple of them, right? That is the issue with Lonzo Ball. Lonzo has to be, his strength is basically getting the ball and moving the ball, advancing the ball up court. We know that. His court vision, right? Uh, he passes to a fault. I, like I said in the other video, he has to want to finish more often, right? They know when he goes to the basket that he's not looking to finish, so people go in the passing lanes and then he ends up missing the damn layup. Finish, right? Be aggressive. When we have a mismatch, everybody get the hell out of the zone. If somebody 6'1 is sticking Lonzo Ball, then give him the ball on the block. Be teaching him right now. He probably hasn't learned that up until now, but he can finish with both hands. And if you've got somebody that can already finish with both hands, tell me, I, I, let me tell you, I, as a coach, I'm telling you, if somebody already can finish with, with both hands, then you, your job teaching them low post moves is a lot easier, right? Because he doesn't have to go back to a strong hand every damn time. And that makes the defender have to do something. 
So guys, I know only four, four or five people, but I don't ever tell you to share. Share this. Somebody send this to the damn Pelicans. Absolutely ridiculous to have Lonzo Ball six, six, seven come up court, pass to somebody else, and go run to the damn corner like somebody gonna follow us. And no one is seeing that. Let's get that together because the Pelicans are way better than what they're doing right now at five and ten. That is underachieving. Totally underachieving with the lineup that they have. Do they need a couple of shooters? Yeah, I mean, most teams, right? Because of the, end, the way the NBA is right now. But even analytics and all that stuff, <clears throat> I'm like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said, man, you shoot the ball as a higher percentage when you get closer, right? The threes are cool and you can't defend them and everybody's supposed to shoot threes. Yeah, they, they did that 20 years ago and they told you why. Right? So we're shooting threes. But let me tell you something about them damn threes. When you go home, when you ride with your peeps on your way home after a damn game, did a three-point shot make you go, ooh, damn. Did they make you make faces? No. Dunking on somebody is what makes you make faces. That should be three points. I'm going to say it in every NBA video. When you dunk on somebody, that should be worth three points. Right? They stop the game to find out if you dunked on somebody. If somebody gets up there and blocks a dunk, they should get an extra foul, right? Because, damn it, to get up and block a dunk is huge because, actually, most of the time, you don't got nothing to win for that. It's a business decision. You can get up there and get embarrassed and be on a poster or get a call to foul when it wasn't one. So it's very hard to block a dunk. It should be rewarded. And it's an athletic play. In the NBA, and it's on purpose, we do not reward any athletic plays. We only reward a damn three-point shot that can't be contested. Have you ever watched how people contest the three-point shot nowadays? They really don't do anything. They just go up there and put their hand up there and hope for the best. That's how we can defend them. That is not something that somebody who ever played basketball think is, is so awesome. Ooh, man, he made a three-point. Really? It's really not impressive. So that's my thing with Lonzo Ball. I think if they do this, then they will open up the floor even more, get Bledsoe out of the starting lineup, even though Bledsoe's awesome in his way, but I think he can run that second lineup, literally run that second lineup with Josh Hart and the rest of those guys and Hayes and all them and run them boys, and that would be awesome, right? But then uh, Lonzo Ball can um, you know, stretch that floor, not stretch that floor, but J.J. Reddick can stretch that floor. Right? If Lonzo Ball goes down and posts up anybody to 6'4 or shorter, that would remedy this problem. Guarantee if they let me coach five games, we win the four of them. Dome Sports Talk Worldwide. And I'm up out of here, y'all.